Welcome back to Miller's in Motion. Uh, we had an amazing time running all over back and forth to Florida. <laughs> um, had fun at Disney with some friends. Had a blast at the Florida RV Super Show. But unfortunately, we suffered a very important casualty at the Florida RV Super Show when we were camping. Uh, we were smoking a brisket, as I do, and the grill finally gave way. Completely my fault. I didn't know how to transport a pellet smoker, especially a portable pellet smoker, inside of our RV really well. So I beat it up too far and it just didn't do well. It still lasted almost a year, kind of surprised by that, but because we are no longer having, we no longer have a smoker, and that's a big part of what we do, <laughs> uh, one has been acquired on the pallet over there. So today we're gonna look at our new smoker, and I'll reveal what here in just a little bit. Get it set up, do a burn in, and then depending on how much time we have, maybe do an initial cook or smoke. If it's your first time here, please consider subscribing. We would greatly appreciate it and we'd love to have you. Uh, also, about the same time frame now, uh, RV Unplugged is going to be coming out. So make sure and check out RV Unplugged on YouTube. Uh, we are contestants. We spent two weeks boondocking in the middle of nowhere in Texas uh, with a lot of really cool people and did a little contest. And so go check that out. Uh, and then RV Unplugged Rally is in May. So that is coming up. So if you haven't booked yet, book. But let's, um, yeah, let's dive into this guy. Okay, so question one. I know I'm going to hear it. Uh, did I repurchase the Camp Chef Pursuit 20? I did not. I'm a big fan of change. Um, I like, especially since we have the channel, I like to do different things every single time, um, simply so that we can better inform you. I love smokers. It is a big, big favorite pastime of mine. It gives me something to kind of do. Plus, uh, like if you watch our uh, video, we talk about community food is that driving force for us we like to cook for people and have people over and, and all of that stuff that kind of goes along with it so what did we go with uh, i am trying out the gorilla grills chimp and a gorilla grills is a direct to consumer company um, they did not sponsor this we purchased everything outright um, so let's dive into this box and see where we go I gotta tell you, that was pretty easy. <laughs> um, this is a little bigger than our Camp Chef was, um, but it doesn't really weigh anymore. It's about the same weight. So dry, this is 100 pounds. So that's one thing I will tell you, be careful about if you're talking about getting this from an RV. Like our Solitude 390 doesn't have a lot of cargo carrying capacity. We give up a lot to be able to have this. Well, it's actually a couple of weeks later because I wanted to run through the grill and really kind of put it through its paces. So we've used it as a grill, a smoker, and we're using it as a smoker today slash last night. What are we smoking? Well, I threw a brisket on because I'm testing out a new rub and it's kind of what I'm known for or I'm turning into being known for. Um, whether that's good or bad, who knows? Uh, but so let's go over a little bit more about the chimp and what I like, dislike, and all of those things now that we've been using it for about a month. All right, let's start with the good, the legs. Uh, so most grills that are like this, or most pellet smokers that are like this that are portable, um, either don't have legs, like the Traeger, Ranger, um, the A-Smoke, there's a handful of others. So they either don't have legs or the legs go straight up and down. You have to lock them into place with some other kind of a device. So, so with this, they fold up underneath, just like the camp shift did, but these are individual. The camp shift, they were linked together, so you had to fold the whole side together. So as far as the simplicity of putting it in and out together, so much easier. All right, let's move uh, from my left to right across the grill, and let's start with the hopper. The hopper is actually quite a bit larger than the one that was on the Pursuit. I can almost fit a 10-pound bag of pellets in it, almost. I cannot fit a full 10-pound when it's completely empty, but I can get very close. Now, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, it depends on you. For me, it's a good thing. I don't mind having the extra weight on board because I'm gonna have the pellets regardless. Um, but I could see if you're moving it a lot or if you like to change pellets quite a bit, then maybe it's not the best thing for you. 
on the hopper you're also going to have your temperature control system. Uh, obviously controls what your temperature is set at uh, and how much to move uh, the auger that supplies the fuel for the fire. Um, right out of the gates, let's talk about uh, the good things. So there's two different settings. There's PID and Pro Smoke. So PID is their version of a new technology that kind of helps precisely stay at whatever temperature range you're wanting it to be at. So like for instance, I have it at 250 right now um, because we're wrapping up the smoke of a brisket before it goes to rest for dinner tonight and it's holding right at 250 pretty solid. I mean, it'll fluctuate a little bit every once in a while, but pretty rarely. Pro Smoke is more of what you're used to in a traditional manner. So it'll fluctuate a little bit more, but you're gonna get a lot more smoke out of it. So depending on what you're trying to do, there's good and bads to each of them. You just have to pick which one you wanna use. I look at that as a good thing uh, because it allows me to be precise with my temperatures or what I'm looking to get out of the smoker or grill that day. Um, there's only one external temperature probe, so like when you put your probe into your meat to monitor it. Um, you know, the Camp Chef had two, and I really never understood why, because it's not a very big grill. <laughs> I could never fit more than one piece of meat on there at once. Maybe two smaller pork butts, but that's the only time I could ever really see that happening. So, um, only one that works for me. I, I don't consider that a, a negative. Um, accuracy, it seems to be pretty accurate so far. Um, the only complaint I really truly have about it is actually the exterior face of the um, of the temperature deal. It's a little cheap, in my opinion. Um, it's just a little plastic shield that's over the screen and it kind of gets scuffed up really easily. So I wouldn't mind seeing that become a little bit like a machined metal thing um, that has a little bit more durability. but. As far as its functionality, it's great. Um, like I said, just maybe a little bit more thought into the finished side of it uh, with some metal face or something along those lines. All right, now let's talk about the actual construction of the firebox. Firebox is plenty big um, for what we do. Again, we use ours uh, on our RV that we full time in, so it's the right size for us. Now, it did come with this upper structure and I kept it. Probably not actually gonna keep it. Uh, to be honest, I have yet to actually use it. So, you know, it's one of those deals where it's great in theory, but it's so difficult to get anything underneath it that it's not one of those deals. I could see where people would want it though, especially as like a warming tray uh, or something along those lines. For us, it just doesn't float. It, for us, it just doesn't quite work. Now, the construction of the barrel itself is actually a double wall instruction. That's something that's hard to find in a smoker this size. Um, pretty common on the bigger ones, but on the smaller ones, you know, to find a double wall is pretty hard. My Camp Chef Pursuit was a single wall, and what would happen over time, right in this area here, uh, you would actually start to see uh, discoloration because there was so much heat hitting that right there. This is, I mean, it's hot, don't get me wrong, but it's not even that hot because there's those, uh, that double wall set up. Um, lid, lid is actually in really solid shape. You know, the Pursuit had these little clamps right here. I don't know if that matters or not quite so much. Um, you know, I wouldn't mind seeing it just so that I know when we're in transport in the RV, it was staying down. Um, but it, I also haven't really had an issue with it. Now I ratchet strap ours down with a cover over it. So who knows? All right, let's last but not least talk about the internal construction of kind of everything. You know, on our Camp Chef Pursuit, we did, um, we liked the fact that you could remove the little cup and there was a tray and the ash would fall into it. Uh, we also liked that you could move the um, sear box around so you get more of a sear versus the dispersed heat. What I realized though is that in doing that, we had so many moving parts that every time we jostled it in any capacity, uh, it really kind of bent things and broke it. And it, like I said at the beginning of this video when we were doing the setup, <clears throat> I didn't know how to transport that grill properly. So what ended up happening was uh, ultimately I just accidentally broke that grill. So uh, on this one, there isn't as many of those moving parts and that's really truly by design um, for us. So, you know, everything inside is, has its place. Now you can remove the heat shield, you can remove some things, but you physically have to touch it and take it out uh, and unlatch it. So 
I'm good with that because it also no tells me that all those things won't move when you're in transit. I didn't realize how big of a deal that actually was. As far as the construction of everything inside on this, um, it's a really, really nice stainless steel. The grates are stainless. Um, everything's been holding up incredibly well. I've cooked on this thing now probably a couple of dozen times um, with a handful of smokes and a handful of just like grilling burgers and that kind of stuff uh, and chicken. It's been phenomenal. It cleans really easily. Um, little tip too, uh, Grill Rescue makes a grill that you dip in water, put on there. It works so much better than the traditional like bristly uh, little deal. So check that out. In fact, I will add that to uh, our Amazon store. Also, we have an Amazon store. So if you haven't checked that out, um, all the things that we use on our RV for cooking, for all these types of things, we will uh, put all that on the Amazon store and you can find everything that we use. All right, last but not least, let's talk about all the little things that you see around it, all the handles, everything else, really, really secure. One of the things that I thought was actually a little odd, this guy, so he's a little hot, so I'm not gonna touch him, but um, that would be a drip pan. I don't exactly know <laughs> why it was like that. It took me a minute to, I was a little confused by the whole thing. Uh, I've ultimately, I figured out, you're actually supposed to put a can in there. Um, which is genius because how many times do they give you those little buckets and you line them with foil or they get nasty and then, or the buckets actually end up getting um, just kind of bent and messed up. So the idea is that you get an old can, just a soup can or pretty much anything else you use. Um, if you're doing barbecue, you should be doing some baked beans or something. So there you go. Um, can. And you just dump it in there and when you're done with the grease, you just chunk the whole thing after it cools. So that's actually pretty genius. Um, the way they did that. Also, some other things, and I, again, paid for all of this um, that we added on was I added something called the Pimp Your Chimp. Let me turn you guys around. All right, so ultimately what the Pimp Your Chimp stuff is, this little deal right here, well, this is the exhaust. Um, and so what this does is it deflects it out and up. I've noticed that when I'm cooking, typically something like that uh, is handy because it actually helps the flow of the heat and smoke a little bit. So yeah, so this handle does come on it, but this was removed. Um, this goes in down and then that tightens on back. The other thing that came with it is this. So because we move ours so much, I wanted somewhere to put the power cord. And so this uh, sticks on and then you drill it in. There's instructions that come with it and then it, you've got a little cord wrap. So that's all that comes with the Pimp My Chimp <laughs> uh, package. Everything else is stock and standard. So as far as the construction of the grill, that's about everything. Um, I've been super happy with it so far. Um, now we are actually smoking a brisket, so I'm going to take you all the way through the end of that br the brisket. I didn't show you the prep or anything like that. If that's something that you're super interested in, please let us know. We've talked about adding an extra video a week, uh, maybe something along the lines of cooking in the RV, since it's something Lauren and I actually enjoy doing. And as we travel the country, we can kind of pick up recipes along the way by visiting places. So if that's something that interests you, make sure and leave that comment down below. So is there something that you particularly like about this grill versus the other grill or you don't really care? I like that it talks to your phone. And so if it were to get like too hot or too cold, ah. because remember the last time we tried to use the old grill, it got too cold. And then when we went back and tried it, it got real, real hot. Well, okay. When so, you live in a paper mache house, real, real hot's not good. But it still, that one wouldn't have connected to our Wi-Fi because it was at Chris and Martha Venturesome Couples right. RV. But still there were possibilities. Yeah, I could have done something. That's she's talking about the death of our last grill, essentially. Right. So, so I like that. Okay. Um, so the brisket turned out great. Yeah, super. Um, so I've I've learned enough on it now to know where hot spots are and how to smoke on it, mm -hmm. which is a thing when you're doing your grill. So, mm -hmm. that's gonna do it for this video. So I have a big thumbs up for it so far. We've used it for a bunch of different things. I've been fed at dinner every time it happens, so I'm pretty happy about that. And I'm sure everybody at the uh, the cast of RV Unplugged at the rally is going to critique the crap out of it too, so... I don't think so. I think they're just going to eat it. That, well, the food that comes off of it, not the yeah, grill. I'd not the grill. Medley. All right, so I uh, mm -hmm. guess that's going to do it for this. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them down below in the comments. We'll be mm -hmm. happy to answer them. Mm -hmm. And I'm tired. I'm going to go to bed because I've been up all night smoking a brisket. And even though she was just here... Bye, Mom.